Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And finally, it is time to review the Emotion V13, the most over-engineered wheel for the smallest group of riders. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Now look guys, it took me pretty much forever to make the review of this wheel and nowadays wheels are getting so complicated and I have so much knowledge to share, so much stuff to share, it just takes a long time to review electric unicycles and this is a prime example of that. 2,700 kilometers throughout the last four or five months since I got it. Lots of trails visiting different locations, but therefore I am sure that I can give you the best, most objective, well, it is sort of subjective because I'm the writer, but I can give you a long-term review on this wheel. It's not that I just got the wheel, then I rode it through rain, I rode it somewhere and oh, it's fine. No, it is really a rigorous testing, lots of time spent on this wheel, and therefore I think I can give you a good all-around picture what the Emotion V13 is all about. This review, just like all of my other reviews, will be structured into six uh, categories. First of all, we'll start with safety, then durability and quality of the wheel, the ride, performance, uh, then we talk about features and sort of pr practicality, and finally we will conclude it all. Even though I just pressed the record button on the camera, I know this will be a very long video. So I also provided you with timestamps to just uh, make it easier for you to just skip around the video if you're more interested in certain categories, or if you want to come back to the video uh, once you've already seen it, you can just find stuff easier. Anyways, before we get into all of the nitty gritty, all of the details, all of the stuff that I found out about this wheel, of course, huge thanks to Emotion themselves because they sent me this wheel uh, for free. I could test it I could use it for a long time so huge thanks to the manufacturer that I can give you guys a bigger picture about the Emotion V13. Also if you want to get a wheel like this or any other wheel in Europe feel free to use my coupon code wrong way for 5% off at my e-wheel. I just work with my e-wheel in Europe well if you're in the UK there is personal electric transport I've been working with them for a long time so yeah if you want to get, get a wheel like this in Europe my e-wheel if you want to get it in the States uh, check links below. Those are affiliate links if there are any coupon codes, well, they will be listed below. I will very shortly start with the category safety, but if you're looking to have this as your main mode of transportation instead of a motorcycle, bicycle, I have to tell you that we're not there yet. If you're buying one of those wheels, especially with suspension, uh, you will have more trouble, you will have more pieces that can break. Um, the technology is just not yet there. It's not as robust as motorcycles or electric bikes. Well, scooters, I think they fall apart even quicker. Anyways, I had to change some stuff throughout this 2,700 kilometers. I was using it very thoroughly and pretty much extreme over the top usage, but some stuff like bearings can still break after two or 5,000 kilometers. One of the shocks broke and the shocks look like, well, let me, just let me find them. Oh, I gave them to search. They essentially look like drumsticks. They don't really, really look like something that is in a motorcycle or a bicycle, but this is, it's, it's getting pretty much as heavy as a motorcycle and the price tag is like a motorcycle. It's four and a half thousand euro. It's very expensive. In that price category, if you want the best bang for the buck, I'm gonna right away tell you this is not it. Probably a motorcycle like a Super Soco, something street legal like a Suron if you want to get, just go onto the street, or something else will probably more durable and more reliable in the long run than this. Or possibly a veteran Sherman, which doesn't have suspension, but therefore less parts, and those that you see is they are really a lot more reliable than this. Pretty much on point, I would say, with e-bikes. Maybe not yet motorcycles, but getting there. So if you're getting one of those, just be prepared that you're a precursor. You're using a technology which is very new. They're trying their best to make the quality better, but if you want to have something that will last 10, 20,000, 30,000 kilometers without issues, this is probably not it. With that said, let's get into safety. I got a lot of information and interesting facts about safety, durability, and other criteria of the V13, thanks to Juan from Equalcina in Argentina. So big, huge uh, thanks to you, Juan. You helped me a lot. You're a professional. I am not able yet to get all of the info about electronics and other stuff and wheels. I try my best. I try my best to read through your comments and get information from uh, people that know electronics better than me, but I don't have a degree. Uh, so thanks. Thanks, uh, Juan, in helping me about some of the 
uh, interesting features of the V13. With that said, I have my notes uh, open and let's start with the batteries. And the Inmotion V13 is the first wheel by Inmotion that has a smart BMS. What that means, you can check in your app all of the different voltages of the individual series in the batteries, which means that you can just check what's happening inside the battery if everything is all right. And then the smart BMS will also not allow you to ride if there's too big discrepancies in the battery pack. So huge plus for that. I hope that all future Emotion wheels will have it and from what it looks like with the new v11 and uh, the v14 this will be the way so props to that there's also cell balancing so if the discrepancies are just small but uh, the bms can correct them well then it will do that this just means that the battery has a longer lifespan a unique feature of the emotion v13 is that the batteries are potted which means that they are sort of dunked in silicone which after a while being becomes harder and this provides a lot of positive aspects to the battery pack. First of all, it is um, more resistant to water damage. So this battery pack actually has a IP67 water resistance rating, which is the highest I know of on an electric unicycle. So even if this would be dunked into your local canal or river by accident, the battery should be fine and there shouldn't be any fire hazard like it could probably be with a Kingsong S22 where the battery isn't sealed whatsoever. It also provides additional um, resistance to damage and you know puncture it also provides additional structural integrity to this wheel which is great and if there were to be a battery fire it should contain it a bit better than just the usual battery pack with just the shrink wrap around it it does also have some downsides well first of all it's costly and we know that this wheel is expensive second of all it makes the wheel heavier and this wheel is super heavy I'll talk about that later and thirdly it's very difficult to service the pack if you wanted to DIY or if there would be a service that could just determine mind which shell is broken and you could still use the whole battery pack not just throw it away and then it's just very difficult to do it with a usual battery pack that is not potted you can just locate the cell switch it here it wouldn't be that easy so the battery has a ip67 rating and the whole uc has a ip55 rating which is splash and dust resistant now i was riding this wheel in torrential downpour really one of the worst rains i ever rode in my life and everything was fine uh, when it comes to any residue on the inside there is some dust there is a little bit of um, traces that there might have been water sprayed into it but uh, no issues with the wheel uh, pretty much whatsoever i do not like how the phase wires on top are just super exposed i think they should be covered uh, but i didn't encounter any issues when it comes to water damage there were some um, units that had some water damage in the displays but if you have this issue just contact emotion directly they should send you a replacement one or some sort of screen protector I didn't have any issues with uh, the display however I do have some sounds uh, coming out of the bearings but more on that a bit later Emotion does seem to take safety very seriously with the V13 as it also has a suite of temperature sensors on board so not only do we have individual temperature sensors in the battery which makes sure that the battery doesn't heat too much either when riding or when charging we also have a temperature sensors in the motherboard and I think individual sensors also for the MOSFETs which provide power to the motor we also have a temperature sensor in the motor so if you're doing more inclines if you're really pushing the wheel it should um, just not allow you to ride on it if it gets too warm which is really nice some uc manufacturers like veteran or bigot still do not provide any temperature sensors in the motor to this day which is in my opinion a big drawback to the wheels when it comes to charging naturally we have a cold charge board in the back which means that if you insert the plug from a charger which is not connected to the wall outlet there will be no spark it's a safe charge board great we, we are used to getting this with an emotion but then again i really don't like the port that uc manufacturers are using on 126 volt wheels it's the gx16-6 uh, the pins are pretty small they're not as durable it, I, I bent one pin in the v13 because i was trying to put the charger in but then this port just sucks it's also not the best when it comes to water resistance or water safety because the pins are pretty close together and I think they should just use something else like even a XT60 plug or get the plug that the electric scooters have to use mandated in the European Union. I know it started with the S22 and they started using this port but I think this port should be abolished, change it to something else, please, alright? Because this is not a good port. 
Further on, when it comes to charging, there is a great charging control on the board in this wheel. So if the charger is faulty, if it sends some weird signals, it will not allow you to charge. If there is, you know, too big discrepancies in the batteries, it will not charge. If the current is too high, it will not charge. So great safety when it comes to charging on this wheel as well. Now let's talk about the controller a bit. And Emotion released their own video just about this Raptor controller they have inside of this wheel. And supposedly it's the most advanced UC controller yet, and this is is the words of Juan who worked at Orion. So he knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of MOSFETs inside, a lot of capacitors, and all of the parts are not stressed at all. So the software limits the performance of this uh, controller a lot due to safety. So even though there is a lot of parts there, and if one part breaks, like a one MOSFET, it could mean that you just fall on the wheel, but all of the parts are working at a very, very chill performance. Like they're not stressed pretty much at all. And headroom is great. Just like on all other in motion wheels, when it comes to performance and safety, there is alarms for um, accelerating too hard, for going uh, too fast of a speed at a certain battery level, and also it will tilt you back. So the wheel will lift up the pedal, sort of tilt in this direction, forcing you to brake. When it gets overheated, it will do the same, or if there is some sort of fault in the battery. So that is also great to see. It will not allow you to ride if there is something broken in the wheel. Last but not least, let's talk about the parts in this wheel. And I already mentioned that there is a lot of headroom in all of the parts in the wheel. Not only is the Raptor control controller very strong and efficient and uses very little of its uh, capabilities just to make sure that it's running cool it's and, and you're not stressing the parts too much it also has very thick i don't know eight AWG wiring to the motor. It's pretty much the only wheel that uses such thick gauge wiring, which is great. Emotion also uses motorcycle grade connectors, so you're sure that if you put the connector in and out, you won't have any issues. Now, I did have some issues with mine, but this is because this is a demo unit and they later upgraded those sockets just to be a bit tighter in and not fall out by themselves. And another great thing about Emotion is that all of the parts are readily available. So you can trace back to the Emotion V5, V8, V10, all of those wheels still have parts available. If you buy a Bagode wheel, or you bought a Bagode wheel three years ago, chances are you're out on your own and uh, you are just able to source parts that are used or some left in a stockpile, but Bagode will not provide you any parts uh, for this wheel from factory. With Emotion it's different, so even with their older wheels, you can just get the parts, uh, there's customer service, and uh, yeah, you're just not stranded with a wheel that is discontinued after two or three years of use. So with that said, this is all about safety. I know it's a lot of data, but bear with me. Let's get into durability. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, I stop. All right, so uh, first up, when it comes to durability, there are those bumpers in the front and in the back, and they're very nicely designed, and they're actually part of a inner skeleton on the Emotion V13. So the V13 is not like the Sherman S where those side battery covers are the structural element of the wheel and that's it. No, there's also another layer of shell or like exoskeleton or in, in skeleton inside of the wheel. And the bumpers are actually part of it, which provides additional structural integrity to the wheel. Uh, further on, I, you can see here that I had some uh, crashes on this wheel. Well, I wanted to um, just uh, let it ride by itself and then jump back on it, and uh, it didn't always work. So it was a lot of crashes, but uh, the wheel uh, held on very nicely. The light is protected, it has those bars here that uh, provide additional structural integrity and you can actually lift the wheel up a bit easier by those because they're lower place so i can just lift it a bit easier they also have uh, holes on the side to make them just a tad lighter just to make sure that the wheel doesn't get even more heavy than it is really like those bumpers there's also some threads on the side where you can just install some mods on it i didn't really use that but hey if you want you can you can just also take them off and then repaint them make the V13 yours and everything is like pretty easily detachable. Uh, there's also those reinforcements here on the side. They protected uh, the battery actually on those crashes as well. Those corner pieces are held together by um, just double-sided tape, but this is enough for this case and this provides additional safety to the battery and durability. So I heard actually from Juan that one of uh, his friends had a crash with a motorcycle and this thing is what protected against a battery puncture. Really well thought out. I also really like the shape here. Yeah, there's a lot of thought that went into this wheel. The plastics are also tough. Like you can see that I don't have pretty much any scratches on this wheel. 
although this wheel did fall a couple of times. It's not fiberglass or reinforced plastic, but still, it's pretty durable. I do have to complain a bit about screw quality though, because the screws that Emotion is using in all of their UCs pretty much are just, they, they're just not as good as they could be. Like their quality is fine, but they, like they don't fall apart on their own, but they could be just better, especially if you're paying so much for an electric unicycle like this. So not only is the thread here around the battery just a bit too small, and uh, you're using a, what, two and a half mil hex key to um, unscrew it. I think a three or a four would be better, but you can also damage the head of the screw if you are screwing it a bit too tightly. The first batches of the V13 also had problems with motor bolts, which were not strong enough, or there were problems with the supplier. They changed them, now it's fixed, I didn't have any issues at all, but the screw quality just could be better. I mean, screw that in motion. Screw that a bit better. Another good aspect is that all of the pieces are modular. So if something breaks, you can just replace the front headlight unit, you can replace the bars here that are connected to the exoskeleton, you can just change the shock. I had to change the, change the shock, so you just sent me the shock, not a huge big assembly. This wheel is pretty modular and if you want to repair it, it's not that tough to do. The rim on this wheel is amazing. Like this is probably the toughest rim right now on the market. So if you had some issues with UCs and you were part of the veteran broken rim club, well, there is no Emotion V13 broken rim club. This thing is amazing. I was riding this wheel at low pressure, even without suspension, sometimes uh, dropping into a pothole, uh, going upstairs, going downstairs, never, never had a dent in the rim. I think it's pretty amazing how durable this thing is. Well, it makes it also heavier, but the durability is great. The fit and finish is also something that we love about Emotion. Like you look at this wheel and it's just, it just looks so modern. It looks well assembled. All of the gaps here are small. All of the pieces are well thought out. It just doesn't look like a, you know, Mad Max machine like the Bigot Extreme or a pretty good machine, I would say, like the Veteran Patton. Here, everything looks well designed, thought out, assembled and neat. I really like that about Emotion. The trolley handle is also good. I can lift it up here for a second. Oh, I hope this table just holds itself. This thing is 55 kilos, but seems to work. Thank you, Lidl. The trolley is good. Wobbles all around just slightly, but it's made out of metal, which is great. However, I really don't like the screw quality here. Again, screws are on in-motion wheels. The screws are super tiny. Uh, I broke the thread on this one. I just glued everything here on top so it doesn't move on the top and it seems to work. But uh, yeah, the, the, the trolley handle quality could be just better. Uh, there's also a, a rod here, um, which is well, sort of a shaft here for, for the trolley handle. And it doesn't have any stopper. Like this shaft, if you just don't look at it, it can just slide out on itself. And I never, nearly had that happen to me. So there is no like grub screws to hold it in place. Really weird that Emotion missed out on that, especially that there's so many op opportunities to, to do this. So a trolley handle could be better, but it's, uh, it's pretty good still. And it's a nice shape. You can, well, more about the trolley a bit later in ride or features. No, in features. <laughs> I really hate the tool for the shock. I can't even find it. <laughs> I wanted to complain that I, um, I don't like the tool for the shock and that I don't like the fact that there's a tool to adjust the shock and dampening, but I can find it. So I, I will just show you a picture. So you need to carry this thing around, which is annoying at first. The aluminum quality of this part is very bad. So actually when trying to put the, um, uh, put this uh, suspension out, I damaged it, and then we need to repair it just like by cutting into this uh, piece uh, a bit more. You can loose it, uh, it's, there's no space in, like if there would be a space in the wheel where you can store it, that would be already a, a lot better. But the quality of it, the necessity of it is just frustrating. I, I hate this tool and I can't even find it. Damn it, maybe if I'll find it later, I'll, I'll re-record it, okay? Now a bit of a big con here in the durability department, which is the sliders. Now the sliders are already a lot better than on the V11 because you can adjust the tolerances, but the thing that still is very frustrating about suspension EUCs in general is that they need a lot more maintenance than a bicycle, an e-bike, or a motorcycle. So I was using this wheel for about 2,700 kilometers and the suspension is not as smooth anymore and it does make a lot of sounds. Auto. 
So what I've heard is that you need, need to grease those sliders, you can adjust it from the inside, uh, but frankly it's just not really something I'm down to doing. I would like to have a suspension on this like there will be on the V14 with uh, really good sliders, really good seals and sort of like a motorcycle grade fork per se. So. Even though um, they try to make this better, there's also more sliding elements in the, uh, on the inside, I guess. There's still too much maintenance with it. I don't like how it sounds. I don't like the, as much how it works. It does have just eight centimeters of travel, which for the street, I guess is enough, but it could have been a lot more in my mind. So even though sliders are better here, you can see a lot of wear and tear here on the corners. Uh, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of this type of suspension on the Emotion V13. I'm, I would much prefer something on the V13 like we will get on the V14. The shocks are also a weak point of the V13. Now they're pretty similar to what we had on the V11 and those tended to leak, those are air shocks. So if you are riding in the winter, you will have to pump them up a bit more frequently. And I actually broke one um, air shock in my V13, but that was also because I was using too high of a pressure uh, for you know going on a bike trail, a single track. So while on 220 PSI it's working now fine and it's good, I just don't have enough um, hardness I would say uh, for doing bigger drops and some more like performance oriented riding. But even when you ride normally I don't expect those shocks to really live a long time. It's, they're just tiny, they're air shocks, they're manufactured by Emotion, they're, they're not made by like a big, I know, big shocks company. I think this could have been done a bit better, even though they split the, you know, shocks up now to have a separate shock for dampening, separate shock for a suspension. Yeah, I'm just not really a fan of the system and I don't think it is as durable as for example a coil oil shock or a separate shock just one shock in the back like we get on the extreme well maybe not the one from the extreme because it's the gold quality but uh, like a shock we get on the Kingsung S22. The quality of the battery is, is really good. It's the Samsung 35E, so the Emotion V13 is using smaller battery cells than what UC manufacturers are usually using now. That is because you can get more power out of the smaller uh, batteries because you have more of them, you have more parallels. Now those are not high performance batteries, but because you have so many of them, uh, you should be fine for most high performance use cases. One last thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to durability is the pedal grub screw here on the bottom. So there's a grub screw which holds the pedals so they, are, they don't fall on their own. They sort of don't do that anyway because there's another mechanism, sort of like a gel insert that makes sure that the pedal doesn't fall down. But if you lose this grub screw, the pedals start, start moving about a bit. A bit too much than I would like, same with the other one. So you're sort of standing on the wheel but you feel that the pedals move about a bit. So make sure that you lock tight the screw on the bottom, check on it every once in a while. Uh, just an annoying piece, like they could have just put it on the top so you screw it in on the top and then you wouldn't lose it or they could use some other system. Just another thing to think about and the less things I need to think about, the better. So I complain about this. All right, this is all about durability and practicality. If, if you're still here, while well, I applaud you. This, I think this might be just as long as my V12 review, but let's go on to ride. All right, when it comes to the ride of the Emotion V13, there is a lot of things to talk about. If you want to see a ride review, I already did that. If you want to go more in depth into it. And also I did a ride review of the wheel without suspension. And I still do prefer the ride of the V13 without suspension. And now in this category, I'll tell you why. So first of all, I told you all of the good stuff right now. I told you about the durability. I told you about the safety. All of this makes pretty much no point at all if a device is tough to ride and this is probably one of the most difficult uh, wheels to ride that is available for sale right now on the market the the center of mass is super high it's so high off the ground that if you are going slow it's really easy to fall the wheel just starts tipping over slightly and then it just goes you, you stop on a stoplight you put one of your feet down and then it might just fall again because you have you have to be right in the center of uh, the equilibrium of the mass <laughs> in order for the wheel not to top over. It's so difficult to ride this wheel slowly, especially if you're a beginner. If you are starting out on riding on a UC, don't get this wheel as a first wheel. Maybe 
if you get the optional um, suspension delete mod. Then you can learn without the suspension, which is like fairly easy. Without suspension, like uh, I let uh, someone even ride this wheel who never rode a wheel before, which was fine. But with suspension, it's it's really, really difficult to ride on this wheel. So not only is the center of mass super high, it's also extremely heavy. This wheel weighs, what, 53, 54 kilograms? So when you try to brake, it just doesn't. And if you're a lighter rider, it's just not possible to ride this thing safely. Once you get up to speed, you get the centrifugal force of the wheel and it's like a bit more stable. It's actually super stable. I'll talk, think, talk more about it later. But once you have the speed, it's just so difficult to brake. And I'll talk more about braking in uh, the performance section of this video. This wheel needs a lot of effort. And if you want to get it for yourself, if you're even riding UC before, this thing is a learning curve. And then the heavier and taller you are, it will be easier for you to ride on this wheel. But still, this requires a lot. A lot of patience, practice, and trial and error to make sure that you can ride this thing safely. But with that said, the software is amazing. It's very adjustable and also very smooth. One of the smoothest wheels out there. Not only because of the suspension, but mainly because of the bigger tire diameter that you have here. 22 inches and a 16 inch rim. So in the software department, you have something like acceleration and brake assist. So if you put it on 100%, the wheel will actually tilt forward when you're accelerating. And if you put brake assist, it will tilt back when you're decelerating. Now this is pretty cool um, and a nice feature because the actual half the weight of the wheel shifted forward to make it easier and the pedals also leaning forward. Uh, but then if you want to change direction quickly and the pedals are still like this, it's tough. It's very tough to brake with the wheel leaning forward. So I have it right now on 60% or like 65% both ways and just ride this wheel relatively mildly. And with that, I think I get the best performance out of this. And also huge thanks to Juan who told me about those parameters before I had it at 60 and 30%. Nevertheless, it's super nice that you have this acceleration and brake assist pedal stiffness as well, because then you can adjust it to your liking. If you'd like when the pedals sort of go a bit up when you're accelerating, like it used to be on the MSS wheels, if you are old enough to remember those, or if you're long enough in the community. So it's really nice that you can adjust it to your liking. There's also pretty much no pedal dipping in turns. Once you get the control of this wheel, and once you are used to how much sort of time and um, energy and power you need to put into it to make a move, it's very good to control. Like I can control it relatively well and I think I can control in turns this wheel better than the veteran Sherman S, especially just on usual bike paths because the suspension doesn't compress so easily. It's not like a floating Cadillac. It's uh, more of a sporty ride, especially at 220 PSI, what I have now. And it's just very tightly assembled and uh, very predictable. So even at higher speeds, if you do turns, you know precisely where, where you will be going. If you are braking hard, well, you know that you will not catch wobbles. If you are accelerating, also you get a ton of stability. So once you get there and once you know how much it requires, you have great control. What you do not get, however, is the quick zippiness, the quick reaction times and sudden movements that you can actually do on other UCs on this, very hard to do. One thing that is, um, I think underestimated about the V13 is how narrow this is. Wait, let me take a tape measure. On this top part, this wheel is just 13 centimeters. The veteran pattern on, on the top part really is also 13, but here on the lo lower part, it's 20 centimeters. And this on the lower part is about, because here it's also sort of 20 centimeters, but uh, on top, it becomes a lot less. It becomes like 17 centimeters. But anyways, if you ride this wheel, it feels great. It feels great to uh, just stand on the wheel and not feel like you're, you know, have your legs out like on this S22 and that you need to stand sort of in a power stance. On this S, on the V13, you can stand very comfortably. And this also adds up to the nice cornering experience of the wheel. Like the narrower a wheel, the easier or the better it is to turn. And also because of the shape here, yeah, I, I really like how ergonomic this wheel is made. The wheel also provides you tons of stability. So not only do you have a huge surface here to lean your leg against on, I think that's the easiest wheel to ride on one leg on, 
width, <laughs> also because of the narrowness. But the tire, once it gets rolling, it provides so much stability. I can, you know, ride seated on it, I can stand up on it, I can ride on one leg. This is the wheel I have the most uh, certainty on when it comes to staying in one spot. Well, m mostly because of the big diameter tire. Really nice for long rides, but oh, this wheel can't do long rides because it doesn't have much range. More on that later. The seated ride is also amazing. Not only do you have a nice distance between the seat and your feet, so you don't feel like cramped, uh, the display is also in a spot where you can still read it if you're seated. You get the handle here in the front so you can hold it while, while you're riding. And then you also get the stability of the 22 inch wheel. I think this is one of the best, if not the best wheels for seated riding. The stock tire of the V13 uh, is a bit bigger than the one I put in now. The, so the stock one is a Kenda, I believe, which is also those knobs. It's better, I think, for all around purposes. You can also do some off-road on it, but I really wanted to check how a, a street tire compares. Now the problem is that it's really tough to use the whole potential of this uh, rim on this wheel because optimally you would want to have a 85 by 90 by 16 uh, tire, motorcycle tire, but they don't exist. So I put a 80, 90 tire on it and it's a bit too narrow and a 90, 90 would not fit here with the mud guard. So I guess the stock tire is good enough. Um, it was carving well, it was much nicer to ride on than for example the knobby of CST on big old wheels or the knobby on uh, the Sherman S or Sherman Max models. I think this stock tire is plenty good and actually probably you don't need to change it for a street tire unless you do only street riding. And this wheel is definitely not designed for off-road riding. First of all, just because you can't put enough pressure in, at least for my way, to do more drops, to do more hardcore stuff. Uh, second of all, because of the durability of those shocks, I don't think that they're as durable as other solutions out there on the market. And thirdly, it's just so hard to push it around. Like if you're going very slow, it, it, it's very easy to topple over. It's, tough to change direction back and forth. It doesn't have enough torque to go up very steep hills. Uh, this wheel for like mild trails in the forest, it's fun. I also did some super tough trails on it and there were some benefits like the big tire and the super high foot plates, but heavy off-road is not something I want to recommend on this wheel, especially if you want to keep it working and alive. And it is also frustrating to ride in a city. Like if you're going a bit longer distances and you're just going on a, on a street 50 kilometers an hour, 30 kilometers without any traffic lights, any stop signs or just roundabouts, you're fine. But using this in a city is a bit too frustrating for me with the suspension because it's tough to step onto it. You have to concentrate a lot to balance on it. Uh, it takes effort to accelerate, it takes effort to brake, and sometimes you don't have even, even enough of a braking distance to brake in time. Without suspension, I used to ride this wheel quite a lot actually, uh, just to go places and you know enjoy the V13, but with the suspension, I just keep it here, I don't ride it a lot, yeah. Not enjoyable, I think, to ride in a city, especially with my weight. This wheel is also not designed for lighter riders, so if you're below 80 or 70 kilograms, you will have a tough time to uh, control this wheel. I have a tough time to control this wheel. So this wheel, I think, primarily is designed, or optimal use case is when you are a heavier rider, so over 80, 90 kilograms. It also has a, a very good axle, strong bolts, so you shouldn't have any issues when you're like 100 or 120 kilograms of weight. So yeah, when it comes to uh, the ride, it is a very niche uh, performance. It's uh, very ergonomic, as, as I said, but it's very tough to ride in city environments. Its use case is very narrow. So optimally on a street or on a bike path, which isn't really that crowded, just for heavier riders. And then you don't have much range, which I'll talk about later. So once again, a very over-engineered wheel for a very niche group of riders. All right, so we're done with the ride. Let's talk about performance. And this is the fastest wheel in motion ever made. It's uh, not the fastest wheel in the world per se, because I think that title goes to the Big Yoda Master Pro, but it's still plenty fast. It goes 90 kilometers an hour. And I decided I don't want to test it. I think the speed is irresponsible for going on an electric unicycle. I know I was doing it previously, but I came to my mind, it doesn't make any sense. I think the top speed, Optimal top speed of VUC should be around 50 kilometers an hour and putting 90 here in the hands of people that can just buy it, don't have a driver's license and just ride it anywhere. I don't think it's a good idea. And if in motion really like puts safety first in their wheels, I don't think that such high speeds should be available 
to just usual customers around the world. I would much prefer to have more torque, better braking than this ridiculously high top speed, which is in my mind, absolutely not necessary. If you want to go fast, take a train, take a motorcycle. I hate cars. Those speeds I don't think should be achievable or it shouldn't be a selling point even of a electric unicycle. And then if you go so fast, you'll go just like 40 kilometers, 50, and you'll drain the battery. So what's the point? What's the point at all? Uh, when it comes to the acceleration test, here it is uh, now, up to 60 kilometers an hour. Come on, 70, and now break. Ooh. Also did one the test up to 70 kilometers an hour, so you could see how many watts I'm drawing, and how much power I'm drawing. This wheel goes up to 10,000 watts when it comes to peak power output. I went up to six and 7,000. So there, I could have done it faster, but I don't really feel comfortable doing it. And I don't think this wheel is really good with those quick power um, spikes. Like if you like really push it, you can just lean forward. So um, that is also why I had a bit of limits on the acceleration test. When it comes to the brake test, this is the first time I ever recorded a brake test uh, with a EUC when it comes to distance. Brake test from 30 kilometers an hour. Five meters. So I guess five meters is the best thing I can do from 40. 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Could have been breaking a bit earlier, but we got seven and a half meters. 50. So about 14 meters. Brake test from 60 kilometers an hour. Brake. <sighs> Around 21 meters, 22 meters. Braking from 70 kilometers an hour, attempt number three. And let's break. <sighs> Oh yeah! I got 30 meters. And you can see that if you go faster, the, the brake distance just becomes so much more. From 30 to 40, it's a small difference, but from 50 to 60, it's huge. Or 60 to 70, it becomes insane. And this is only if you are able to do it on this wheel. Like It takes a lot of practice to brake so hard and then not catch any wobbles and be in the right position to do it. Like it's not as easy as just hitting the brakes on a motorcycle. All right, so now let's talk about inclines. And this wheel just really disappointed me. And I'm inclined to say that it's been my biggest disappointment when it comes to torque on wheels, uh, because they were just advertising so much power, so many MOSFETs, so many capacitors. And then it climbs worse than the Emotion V11, like what the hell? And I do those tests, not only because I'm a moron and I like to go up steep stuff, this also indi indicates how easy it is to overpower it when you go on flat ground. How easy it is it to overpower? How much headroom do you have as a heavier rider? And you don't have a lot of it here. They could maybe bump it with a software update because I said the controller isn't stressed whatsoever, but they didn't yet, so great. The motor they're using inside is also just a C30. It's not a C30 seven, I guess, like Veteran uses, not a C38 or C40 like Bigode uses. This has very th narrow magnets. Now there is a lot of winding there that should make up for it, but the torque again on this wheel, disappointing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, when it comes to range, yeah, I'm disappointed again, because the range, like initially I thought it's not that bad. I was doing a pretty small, slow, mild range test on this wheel, and I did about 105 kilometers via GPS. 
but then I started riding this wheel a bit more and I just noticed how bad it is. Like, recently I had it charged up to 100%. Maybe it wasn't balanced, but it was showing 100%. I went for a 40 kilometer ride and I just had 55% battery left. So in usual circumstances, you're using more than 1% for a kilometer. It has a 3000 watt hour battery, but it's just so inefficient. I once went on a longer trip to a city outside of Warsaw. I did 83 kilometers and I had 13% battery left. Like, and I was doing just like a long range style ride. I was going sometimes 40 to 50 just to average a bit higher, but then I had to slow down to 30 because I knew that maybe I wouldn't be able to come there. So. What is the point of such a heavy wheel if you can have the same range or something that weighs 40 or 35 kilograms? Like I think at this point, the range on the S22 at similar speeds is very similar to the V13. Juan was telling me he has about 65 kilometers of range with his style of riding. He is heavier than me, about 90, but, and, and rides faster. But if you want to charge it up fastly, you have a 14 amp charge limit. So it charges up in about two hours, but you don't get a fast charger in the box. I want to get good chargers in the box from UC manufacturers. I am sick of getting those slow chargers in the box. Like, give me 14 amps and then you give me this brick that is five amps. Like, I'm glad it's a bit faster than the one and a half amps we had, you know, years ago. But I would want to have just something that I can plug in and I know I can charge at the fastest speed available. And something like smaller, more compact, more intelligent, something with an app. Like, in motion, you can't do it, just you don't. 14 amps is the max limit, five amps is the usual charging speed, so about six hours for a full charge. Anyways, that's it when it comes to performance. So let's talk about features. All right, so there's a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to features. I'm getting more and more drunk on in motion, I guess. <laughs> getting more and more in a... Oh, I don't even know. Am I drugged by in motion reviewing? Am I just inhaling too much in motion? Am I still all right? Is there enough oxygen here? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> features. Features time. So let's talk about the light first. The light is great. It's a motorcycle grade light with a daytime running light. But you know what they forgot? On, in motorcycles and on any other device that you use, use on a road, you can adjust the tilt of the light. Can't adjust it here. So I am forced to, to ride with a two uh, degree angle because this is, this is the only point where I still have good lighting and I don't blind others. I wish that they would just make it adjustable like on the V14. So even though it's motorcycle great, it's not perfect. When it comes to the taillight, it's okay. It could be brighter. It could like light up more when it breaks. Now it just flashes, but it's fine. Like uh, if I would go on the road, I would want to have something more and I probably would use a helmet light still because this, isn't, this is not as bright, but uh, it's fine. It's better than on the V12, I guess. There's also no Bluetooth speaker on this wheel, although there is a speaker. So the speaker just tells you some system information. Like if you would go too fast, it would start to beep. You can set up also sounds when turning on and off the wheels so, and when turning on and off the light and other stuff, uh, but it's not a good quality speaker. So what I've heard from Juan is that he would want it to be a bit louder and I have to agree with him. And also if you want to hear alarms better, then it's way better to have a buzzer in my opinion than a speaker. There's also a USB-A and USB-C charge port in the back for your phone. So if you run out of juice on your phone and you have a cable with you, it's a bit easier than carrying a power bank. You just ride your power bank. Emotion also has one of the best displays fitted to electric unicycles. So with this display, you can set pretty, pretty much everything you can set up on the app uh, from pedal softness, sensitivity, transport mode, all of the stuff that you have on the app, you can set up on the display. One thing I also really like is that you can put in a pin code. So you just type in the pin code and then you can ride the wheel. If you don't know it, you can't ride it. There is one downside to it though, if uh, the display lags or there's some sort of bug, which happened to me once, you can't type in the pin code. The display is just off, so you can't ride the wheel. But happily, it worked after a while. The Emotion app is super functional and it's probably one of the best apps out there. And I, it, it really looks very sleek, very nice, very modern. And I'm a really big fan of this app. Available, of course, on iOS and Android. Veteran! You can set up lots of stuff there. From the ride customization that I told you before, you can also customize the sounds. So you can actually record your own voice or your favorite tune and it will play it when you turn on the wheel. Mm. 
Then there's also a very comprehensive info about the vehicle, like the smart BMS features. Uh, you know, all of the info that you want to have is straight up in the app. One of the features that is only available on Emotional Wheels is over the air help. And as you are having the wheel, you can update the software to have some improvements, though so that's uh, pretty common. But there's also remote diagnostics. So if there's something broken with the wheel, Emotion can actually connect with the wheel through China, like from China to, to here via the internet and fix it or check what the problems are, which on one hand is really cool, but on the second hand, there is just more uh, software, could be more bugs, could be just something that, you know, requires a reboot, but you can't do it, but then Emotion needs to connect to it. You can also send update logs to Inmotion if you crashed, if there was some fault with the wheel, and uh, they will just investigate it and fix the software according to that. I didn't have the best experience with that because I fell twice on the V12. It accelerated on its own. Uh, I hope they're doing it better now. Well, they were also saying that uh, they fixed this issue, but well, at least you have the possibility to do that. You don't have such features on Bigod and Leaperkim. I think you do have them on Kingsong. No, not sure though. Another thing that you might have not known about is that Inmotion can lock a wheel that has been stolen. So if someone stole your wheel, tell Inmotion about it, and they will lock the wheel, I guess, if they could connect to the app. So if you stole an in-motion wheel, connect it to the app. It's fine, nothing will happen. The trolley handle is also pretty good. And one feature I particularly like, it doesn't work that well with the seat, but it does, is that it sticks out by itself. It erects itself upon summoning, which is great. It's sort of relatively ergonomic, but pushing this wheel around stores is not easy especially with the suspension. The center of mass is super high. You need to just be very careful to not um, let it fall on the side, but you can put your helmet on this bar or on the trolley handle, which is an additional upside. Not too bad of a trolley handle, I guess, but the wheel itself is just hard to push around. There's also a lift switch in the back. You need to hold this lift switch while lifting the wheel. Can't do that. If you would just need to like press twice to engage it and press twice to disengage it, then it would be fine. But now it's completely useless. Just turn off the wheel, lift it, turn it back on again. When it comes to pedals, they're, well, they're not my favorite, but they work sort of. Sadly, there is no nylon of solution yet uh, for the V13. Um, I do like that they're very big and spacious, which is great, but I don't like the studs that are here. Those are milled in studs and uh, they just don't provide you with the necessary grip and they can get dull after a while. You can't replace them. You can't like set the height of them. Not the biggest fan of those. Furthermore, you can adjust the angle of the pedals. Well, I couldn't because they didn't send me the plate which you put in here between the pedal and the pedal hanger, but you could if you would have the tool and probably you have it if you bought it. So this is cool. I guess not as good as a, of a solution as a screw that you can adjust freely, but hey, that's better than nothing. The kickstand is something I also really like. It looks very durable. It looks the part. It's easy to put the wheel on the kickstand, but it's not the most stable. And if you crash, it, it's really easy to bend it. The seat is something I've grown to really like. Initially, I thought there would be some issues with the trolley handle inside, uh, but uh, no, it's actually a great seat. It's relatively comfortable and it's not in your way when you're riding on the wheel. So really great seat that right. If you have this wheel, I highly recommend getting both the seat and the kickstand. I'm just bummed out that if you're paying so much for a wheel, so you still need to pay more to get a seat and a kickstand, which I think should be mandatory. Like on Big Goat, you just get it. Another feature I don't like on the wheel is uh, the suspension adjustment. So I was already talking about the tool earlier, which I don't like, but then there's also those flaps on the top and they're like difficult to get out, especially if you have something here. So and the seat, so then you just need to take your fingernail and like poke them out and then you have them out and then you can lose them and it's like not that easy to put them back in again. Well, I'm just not a fan of this. It could be just done better in my opinion. I really like the fact that there is a suspension delete option on this wheel. Now this, this depends on the distributor. Well, I'm glad that they thought about it because you have the option of trying this wheel in different settings, something that is not possible on all other suspension wheels. So really cool that they thought about that here. And it's not that hard to do either. I did it in probably like 20 minutes and then you can just ride this wheel without suspension and I prefer it this way. A thing I don't like though is that the tire change is not that easy. Now the easiest tire change by far is on big goat wheels nowadays because everything is just there and it's super easy to do. So here you still need to take this motor out, then you need to remove the mudguard, you need to do something with the cables. Now there's a tire change by um, I guess by Albert to sell one pack and a tire change by Mobility Urban so if you want to check that out 
feel free to check those out but it could be easier not the e not the worst one yet better than on the v11 but in general when it comes to working on the wheel not too difficult as i've said earlier when it comes to the mud guards they're really good i was as i said riding in tor torrential downpour uh, both the front mud guard and the rear mud guard do hold up i applaud for the good mud guardedness of the emotion v13 one thing i pretty much forgot about is because i put right away those nylon of uh, kinetic pads on the wheel is that I really didn't like the stock pads. Now, the only wheel for now which had like good stock pads for me was the Big Goat EX20 and the Extreme right now, but the Emotion pads I just didn't like them. They were either too narrow or you could just like slip out of them. I put those kinetic pads which are amazing. I think those are the optimal pads uh, for this wheel. Give you great comfort, great stability. If you want to ride this wheel, you better get those pads. And you also have a big surface here on the side to mount any sort of pad. You can actually put another middle piece of those kinetic pads so you have like a huge front pad. This is not something I did, but hey, you can do it if you if you want to i guess anyways wow we're through with pretty much all of the categories and now we just need to have the conclusion i've been talking here for an hour i'm hungry but let's get this done let's conclude it all all right so we've talked a lot about this wheel and it has a lot of features it has a lot of points it has a lot of you know thought plenty of R&D going into it. But my question is, what is the point? What was in motion thinking? What did they achieve since launching this wheel? And to sum it up, I think they achieved a lot of R&D and they could learn a lot themselves. But let me quickly guide you through the thought process I have here. So did in motion get any riders like Bigod or veteran riders that wanted a different wheel? Well, pretty much no, because it doesn't have enough range. It's as expensive, but doesn't have the range. And it doesn't have the torque. It, it's, it's a no, pretty much, for most Bigod or uh, veteran riders. Did they get any newcomers on board? Well, probably very little, because this wheel is known for being extremely difficult to ride and difficult to start on. Did they get any riders from the V11 or V12 that needed more range? Possibly a couple, but as said, the range just limits this wheel a lot. The weight of it too. I don't think that most Emotion riders wanted to have a heavy high speed wheel. I think they wanted to have a wheel which is comfortable, dependable and has more range. Like if they want something more than a V11 or a V12. Did they achieve like any sort of success in performance or high speed well they did make the fastest wheel and they did make the raptor controller but this wheel isn't known to be like the fastest around people still ride their master pros people do speed tests or acceleration tests not on this wheel like sometimes this wheel would win a race or be like a second or third recently that happened in spain but i don't really think that the purpose of this wheel is racing like and it didn't achieve like anything special uh, in my opinion in this regard and because of the price point there's very little of those around as much as we have many expensive sherman s's there is you know sherman maxes other bigode wheels i just know two v13s in poland one of them is mine second of one uh, is somewhere in poland well, a rider has it you know how many sherman s's are here just in Warsaw, there's probably like 15 or 20. So what Emotion did is like they over-engineered something. They did a lot of R&D and safety, which is amazing. And it pushes the industry forward and it pushes their brand forward. They developed an amazing controller and motor. But commercially, this wheel is a total flop. Even if you have the justifications and quality and R&D, this wheel is just so hard to ride and so like it takes so much effort to take it out for a spin that it just almost disqualifies itself for the rider. And of course it's too heavy. Like if you want to put this wheel into a train, very difficult. You can't do it, but it's very difficult. In a car trunk, same thing. I somehow lifted it here, started going to the gym, working out. So that's really cool for me, good for me. But for most people, like 
you would want to have something lighter. Anyways, I guess the creation of this wheel is still pretty impo important, especially for in motion. Uh, for their R&D, it is very nicely assembled and it does have a set of features which is pretty unique. And with that said, I think that this is the most over-engineered wheel for the smallest group of riders. So, if you're still here, sheesh, you are still here, actually? Like, comment below if you're still here. Type in the timestamp to prove that you're still here. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. This was so much effort. Jesus Christ. Ah. Bye.